Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big shit. Check it, just check it, check it. It's a unique house. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? None, none. You know, my dad, walk on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. But definitely, if you want to see our visuals, you go to our YouTube channel. And not only subscribe to our, our YouTube channel, but we want to go ahead and have you do our membership. How you do our membership under each and every video, including this one in the description section, you'll see a link to say join our membership. You do that, follow the instructions, and you set. You get all of our exclusive content way ahead of time. Just thank me later, but you won't regret it. Thank you very wow. much. Wow, you won't regret it, man. Listen, man. Hey, man, I got a guy in here today, y'all. This guy right here, man, ever since we started, man, he always shows us love. He always come through and check on us, man. The OG for me, I already tell y'all the ones that I figure, I say, hey, that's my OG. Like, this guy right here was in the game when I came in the game. And uh, every time people like, how y'all get, how y'all know him? How y'all get him, man? Sean Cotton is in the building. Man, Boss Talk 101 was good. Man, what well, a bosses talk. We still here, man. Yeah, we here, man. Man, I should have came. Um, I was supposed to come back. I was supposed to come like three months ago. Yeah, but, you know, life, life. Man, I, I I get it, bro. Like I got a partner. Like I always talk about Taylor Gabriel. He used to always tell me, man, OG. And I always remember this when I deal with certain people. He like, man, when I was in the league, he he retired now, but he played for Chicago. He was in the uh, Super Bowl with San Francisco. With uh, no, not San Francisco with uh, Atlanta Falcons. And when they played, uh, when they who did they play? I think it was uh, Tom Brown. I was mad yeah, about that. That was my because my boy was in there. Yeah, you got to realize Taylor in there. He playing with Julio Jones. Right. So I'm like, damn. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, twenty eight to three. Man, he always used to tell me. He say, uh, uh, man, uh, no, he came back. It was some big comeback. Patriots came back. Patriots came back yeah. hard. Twenty eight. It was they were down twenty eight three. Three it sure was. Yeah. I was so upset. In Houston. I was mad, <laughs> but that's my boy. But he always tell me, he say, man, OG, man, you and your wife, man. He be, he been coming there since he was a kid. He say, man, when I was busy, y'all always understood. Y'all never yeah. when you when I didn't call back, y'all y'all weren't the type of people to give up on me. And he mm -hmm. thanked me for that on this show. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's crazy, right? Because that's the way I am. Like when I think about you. I know you be busy. I always yeah. tell you that. So I don't be tripping on, he didn't pick up. You don't never have to worry about right. it because I'm, I'm like, hell, I should be more like you. I've been Man. figuring that out. Yeah. Yeah. And I've been working on that too. You know, I just recently had like three homies pass. Mm -hmm. So you never know when it's going to be the last time you talk to somebody. Exactly. So I'm really trying to do better at like not overworking because we get so caught into working, trying to keep up with yourself, trying to keep up with your peers. You don't want people saying you fell off. So you're always work, work, work. I'm just trying to do better with uh, really just uh, checking on my friends, seeing if people are okay, checking on family. Um, and, and, and I feel like that goes a long way. Just with people, when you randomly call people and they know that, you know, you're on their mind. And not only that, just build memories. Build memories. Because at the end of the day, that's one thing I that's learned a long time have. ago whenever I lost my dad. I, is that's what I have to hold on to now is all the mm -hmm. memories. You know what I yep. mean? The pictures and memories. Take as many pictures as possible. Exactly. And videos. Videos. You hear pictures, their voice. <laughs> all that. So, mm -hmm. um, man, I, I I definitely like, like the, I seen you uh, at the funeral, man. Big D, man. We lost a real one, man. Like, man. like I, when I was, uh, my last, uh, my live, last live I did actually, and, and I hadn't did one way before that, mm -hmm. but I was talking about, you know, one day you hear it and you gone. Like the next day, me and Big D talked the day before. You know, yeah. I know you and him talk like the like day a lot. Y'all talk the day of. He's on. He was on his way to my house. What? Because my other our our other friend Young Street, he's a rapper out here. He died. Six, I heard about six that. days before him. Right. So Big D called me the day before because he was he couldn't make his funeral because he had an interview scheduled for Orlando Brown. Correct. So he couldn't make it. He already booked it, plane, hotel. So he asked me if he wanted to go to the the wake. And I was like, yeah, like let's let's go. And it's crazy cuz that day we were talking about death, funerals, like just talking about it. And then the next day, I called him at 9 a.m. like, "Yo, we still going to the wake?" He said, "Yes. I'll be there at 1." Then I get home, cause my girl was making gumbo, and she was like, you want me to make Big D a plate? 
I said, I said, yeah, I'm about to go take a shower. He's on his way. I swear to God, I'm about to get in the shower, expecting Big D to come. I take off my shirt. I'm about to get in the shower. My homie, uh, Fat Boogie, called me and was like, Big D gone, like real fast. I'm like, Big D, nah, he on his way over here. He was like, Big D, nah, Big D gone. Like, what? Like, bro, nah, I just talked to him, like, downstairs. So it's just like that. And it's, and it's, I've never, it was like a movie because it's like, we were just talking, not 24 hours uh, before, we were just talking about death, funerals, um, like all type, like it was weird. And then 24 hours, 12 hours later, he wasn't here. Like just, and, and he's supposed to go with me to the wake. Him, his wife, Colton and me. It was like, I, like I still haven't shed a tear because it's like, it's not real. Yeah. It yeah. seems like a movie. Yeah. yeah. Like, even when I seen him, I'm like, I'm blinking like, bro, this not real. Bro. Like, man. it's going to take me a while. Like, he was on his way to my house. Like, that, four days before that, I had like a three-hour conversation with him. He had so many plans. You talk to him like, I yeah. So many plans. Like, he was going crazy. He always YouTube, talk about that. He always talk about kids, that. His kids, his wife, like, mm-hmm. put me on gang. Like, I've been in the game for 10 years. He teaching me shit about my YouTube. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, who the fuck? Like, we giving each other game. Yeah. He was on his way to my house, dog. I can't make this shit up. And he Bro. wasn't ill or anything like that. Because he always walking. He always I doing mean, stuff. I he's mean, he's like, he was always bigger guy. He played right. in the NFL before, too. But he's not overweight. Yeah, he wasn't overweight. But, uh, you know, I, you know, it was family stuff. You know, okay. chest pains and okay. stuff like that. I know his voice. When he came over here, he, he had interviewed the OG. That's the first time we talk about that, me and him. His voice started giving him problems. Mm, the like first time. Breath, like, no, no. It, you could hear it in his interviews. Oh. Go back and listen to his interviews. Remember when his, his voice, voice changed? His yeah. voice was changing. He, it started here when he had interviewed Artola Marv mm-hmm. and them guys here with me. Wow. And, he, and from that day, and even when he went to get diagnosed, uh, he called me so excited leaving the hospital or leaving the doctor's appointment to tell me it wasn't cancer related. Because he was oh, worried okay. about that. He would that. talk to me about this, bro. So like, he had like, he had like a... Uh, he had this 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 issue with his voice Okay, that he could not figure out how to get rid of it. Because he was almost at one time. Yeah. Even on your interview. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. And he couldn't figure it out, but we would talk about that. And I wouldn't talk about it if he was still living, to be honest yeah. with you. But intimately, we would talk about that, about it, uh, we celebrated when it wasn't canceled right. together on the phone. I was like, man, I was. We, I ain't gonna say what I would say, but me and him would talk about a lot of stuff, mm-hmm. you know. And and that's what was key for me. And he helped me with so many things on man. Boss Talk. Like mm-hmm. without him, I would not have this platform where it was exactly. where it went. I'm telling exactly. you, I know that yeah. because she know how I was about him. I, we he stopped talking to me one minute. I was mad at him because he didn't talk to me. And I was like, mm. what the hell wrong with him? I tried to take him with me to the ice tea interview. Yeah. I was like, man, you got to fly with me, man. You got to come. Because they said I could bring one more person. Right. You know what I'm saying? I was like, they said I could bring another person. Yeah. I want you to come do one with him. Mm-hmm. But he never answered the phone. And he mm. wouldn't answer for about, what, about two, two weeks? weeks? And then <laughs> after that, he started back answering. Now, I got on him about it. He never told me why he stopped answering. Yeah. But he never did that again. You know what I'm and saying? It was never like with him. Like you know, a lot of these media guys are like in secret competition. With him, no. it was never that. Mm-hmm. Like when he first to- when he first told me he was when he first told me he was about to start doing interviews, I would do it. Like I would go on his platform just to vent. Like yeah. that's what we <laughs> like. That was my guy. But with him, it was never like no like secret competition. No, like, right. He would always tell me ways to how to make more money. Like we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Like, just little like just little things. Like and I would give him a game. He would give me game. And it's just sad because he the last upload the the last upload on his channel was his new show. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I mean, I'm being real, shoot. He um, he sent me his like the last payments was his biggest payments. He sent them to me. Yeah, the last one. Yeah, I the, remember. Yeah, he, he sent, sent it to me. Yeah, me. Uh-huh. He was like, yeah, he was what, happy what the about YouTube, yeah, what them so looks happy. like. He yep. giving me the, he like yep. look what I'm doing Same, like, man. and I was loving that because people don't realize, man, that motivates you. Say if he could do it, I could do exactly. it. Exactly, and that's how I was looking yep. at it. It was always, man. I got to text him, man. Congrats, both mm-hmm. his numbers. He would call me, and it was like that was big for me. That's why when it happened, man. I ain't want to talk to nobody. I ain't, I got to not just kind of distance distancing yeah. myself because I really didn't didn't feel this no more for a second. Man, just like, for a quick exactly, a glimpse, a glimpse like, bro. Like 
The this shit man. crazy. He kept calling everybody like, "Is this true? You the is one? You the one? I your... seen it on your post because I mean, you follow yeah. each other, and I was like, "Man, this can't." It, but I know but if it's coming from, from you, bro, it had to be real, true. bro. That shit like, and nobody knew. Everybody was calling him like, nobody no, knew. no, no, bro, nobody knew that. Yeah, that shit's real. Like, and he, like I said, he was on his. I'm expecting by the time I get out the shower, he'd be calling me or he'd be honking outside. And you, you get like you just gotta understand like, and then I didn't even believe it because my homeboy had called me, so I'm in the shower. I was I just got off the phone. I still got in the shower because I didn't believe it. When I'm in the shower, I look at my phone and it says Big D name on it. So I'm like, oh man, he's still alive. I pick up the phone. It was his wife. Damn. And that's how it kind of. That's how I it. knew like what like y'all and she was like, um. I just, you know, we were supposed to come. I just know, you know, you were expecting us to come. To I was like, like, what? what? Like, and they say, don't question God, but it's just like, man. Yeah, that was, that was a tough one, man, for me. I don't know, like, that in this world we in, that, that, was, that was, I know you've seen it more than me, uh, but he was close because when it came to information and the grind and, and you know, just even me linking with you and feeling comfortable about how I do my interviews. And he was one of those guys that I relied on. And yeah. I, like I said, I'm gonna miss him a lot because I really never don't rely on a lot of people, bro. Mm. I'm really, right? We mm -hmm. just kind of stayed yeah. ourselves, bro. And and it's like, that, that was that one that really, mm. really kept me, make, you know, helped yeah, me to go yeah. through, you know what I'm saying? But it's all good, man, like I, I said. Know. And you know, when you say, you know, don't question God, you know, as I got older, I learned not to mm -hmm. because I ain't going to get the answer anyway. Exactly. So, <laughs> so I just be like, you know what? In my mind, everything happens for a reason. And how I look on everybody's life is everybody's life is a lesson. What did I need to learn from his life? What mm -hmm. attributes did he do in this world that I need to keep carrying on? Like, what does he normally always say? What does he normally always do? Mm -hmm. That's how you keep a person's legacy going exactly. is by using whatever that they did and implement it into your life mm -hmm. and keep it going. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because everything happens for a reason. Exactly. And, that, and at his funeral, you know, what I took away from it is just like, none of the material shit matters. Like, exactly. we wear the chains and all. The, the BS, like, that we glorify at his funeral, it was nothing but memories. Mm -hmm. What he said mm -hmm. for people. That's really what matters. Mm -hmm. Like nobody at your funerals, nobody's gonna talk about the material stuff. Like, oh, this is just for marketing and things of that nature. But it's all about how do you affect people, how do you help people? Yeah. And that's what I really took from it. That's why I said earlier, like working so hard, I just need to kind of stop working so much all the time. And sometimes just reach out to people and see how people are. Mm -hmm. That's real, so. man. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna uh, talk about a few things today, man. Just had R.I.P. to Big D. Yeah, R.I.P. Man. Mm -hmm. Um, 99 overall, like mm -hmm. that's your company. Yeah. Like, like what's the, when you, when you think about that company, you've established something that nobody, I don't think nobody in, in the Dallas area, I hadn't seen it, me, but I don't know a lot, yeah. but it's just good to see you getting into that lane. What all does it cover? Uh, 99 is a distribution company. It's like sports. Um, I got a youth team, uh, we're ranked top 25 in the nation there, uh, Eighth grade basketball team. Wow. Um, yeah. Uh, but, and they're from here. Like, wow. they're Euless area, uh, Duncanville, Cedar Hill, Arlington, um, uh, McKinney, Frisco. Um, but we're top 25 in the nation. But really, just 99 overall is just music-based. It's sports-based. It's like a branch off from Say Cheese. So wow. did you? I didn't know they could do sports in distribution. I always thought distribution, well, when I think hear about distribution, I only think about music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, 99, I have 99 distribution, and then I have 99 overall sports. So okay. it's, two, it's the same name, but just two different entities. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And, and like... Uh, who are the uh, you still dealing with some of those uh, whether it be NFL players or, or I was working with Arterio Morris uh, but I, I no longer work with him he went to Kimball actually okay and he just uh, man he caught a, he, he transferred to Kansas and caught a rape case what yeah he's from Dallas he's supposed to go to the league and everything Okay, are you gonna be looking into others? Or are you? Oh yes, yeah, a lot of talent out here. Like yeah. I don't know if people like realize, but like the DFW area is like the it's like the new bed for like basketball. Like you got it's like five players from Dallas that just went to the league to the to the NBA, and then you know football has always been a, a Texas thing. Correct. Uh, so of course, uh, it's a kid. It's a kid that goes to Oklahoma State. He's from here. 
Um, his name is Oli uh, Oli Oli Gordon. He he leads the the he leads college in rushing yards, Oklahoma State. Um, so um, trying to you know got to meet with him pretty soon. Um, he's definitely NFL bound. Wow. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely the sports thing is is. It's 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 a lot different from the 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 rap thing. Yeah, you it's like way it a calmer. lot better. Yes, it's it's, <laughs> it's, it's 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 politics and everything that you do, but right. you don't got to worry about you know what comes with the rap shit, the ops, the the killing, the sliding. The, Man, yeah, football is football and basketball is way different. So Mark Cuban sold the the the, the Mavericks. I, I heard. seen that. Yeah, he, he got he he's, got off of them and he made money off of them too. Like from what he, he bought it for two eighty five. Yeah, yeah, and, and then he what, sold it for like. Four, Four billion. billion, yeah, mm. that's crazy. But he built that brand, he though. Did, that brand though. wasn't a brand like how exactly. it is with like him. He was a young owner. Players right. wanted to play, play for him. They won a championship. He's really hands on with the team. Mm. Um, and then, like, he's real youthful. You know what I'm saying? Like, he'll go do an interview with. You yeah, know, he, he did well. He did one with real life. life. He did. So and I mean, I, a lot of players like that. They want to. They want to come play for him, and mm -hmm. uh, and he still has control of the, the operations. I think that he didn't really sell. He sold the majority stake, but he still has operations. Correct. I would think Correct. he would because he's yeah. a smart business. Exactly. Man. He's not going to get rid of exactly. all of it. Oh, but, no. but he left. But he but he left Shark Tank too. Was like, what's really going on? Like mm. things are changing, and I'm going to tell you something. I always say, and I've been saying this lately, is a lot of times they figure it out, and I, and you may even have it figured out. A lot of times, running this business and doing things that I've done over the past, I did not get in and project getting out. Mm -hmm. I should have projected this here's run its course. Right. It's time to move into this. Yep. You see where I'm coming no, from? I see that it. little space period there when I look back is a, a thing where I was like, man, I probably should have did this. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about Terrell store and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Like I should have got off a little earlier because there wasn't no need to keep going when we didn't really, we wasn't even doing nothing with mm -hmm. it. We just, just cause we used to doing it. Yeah. We're successful, but we we could have been more successful. We changed it up a little mm -hmm. bit. So a lot of time we stay on stuff too long. So when I hear you say, yeah, I might be retiring out of the rap. Man. <laughs> I mean, you just gotta look at it like. I'm getting out of the music. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm moving on. But yeah. you know why it is? Because people get so, um, Sentimental values. Mm -hmm. People get so caught up on, oh, that's my baby. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not thinking about it because most successful business people think about that, that's just a dollar right here. So move on to something mm -hmm. as they don't get emotionally attached to anything. Exactly. Yeah. No, I feel that. And it's just like with rap, like, I don't know, man. <laughs> like, who? I don't know. <laughs> the rap shit is just, it, it, ain't, it ain't been the same. Um, I don't want to say rap is dead, but hip hop dead again. Oh, it's it's a rap is in a really really weird space right now. It's it's weird. the it's the it's the lyrics that everybody rapping now. I mean, who's the last artist that that became a multi millionaire rapping about ops and and killing people and that is no money in that. It like I, I just want to tell artists like it's no money. In drill rap, like you gotta really make records now. Tell your story. That's why I don't think there will ever be another um, a Mo Three out of Dallas. You don't think it'll never be I another? Don't, I don't. I don't. I don't see it. I don't see. Not it. in your generation. I, and I'm not saying that. Yeah, not in this generation. I don't, I just don't feel it. I feel like um, you know, if you look at what's popping right now, is nobody telling stories. Is nobody. Um, it's everybody really talking about the same thing. Nobody's vulnerable. Nobody's talking to women in their records. Nobody's putting hooks on their records. Uh, I ain't gonna say nobody, um, but this what's being promoted right now Correct. is not really no staying power. Lyrically, um, did you just say Mo Three was probably one of the best. Oh, he to do is it. the best. Out of yeah, Dallas, he is, he, yeah, it would never, yeah, it would never be another Mo Three. Um, and that's not the, you know, uh, there's a lot of talent out here. There's a lot of talent in every city, but um, I just, I just think we need to get back to really. Um, and, and a lot of people blame me too. You know, a lot of people blame me and. Oh, Sean, you promote this and you, uh, you, you know, you're, you're the reason, um, you're the reason for this, you're the reason for that. But um, is this time, is this time that we change with the time? Yeah, I agree, man. Like, 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 I agree that you've seen this thing. 
And I always, I, I just know that the, the good, you can't have a negative without a positive. You're cranking mm -hmm. a vehicle, okay? So everything not going to be hunkadory. Mm -hmm. Everything not going to be just, you know, and, and I think you did maneuvering. You did what you had to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you for always supporting Boss Talk 101. Let's just get on that right there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I appreciate you for pulling up on Boss Talk, yeah. man. What do you think I about Honeycomb Braze? Well, let me ask this. Honeycomb <laughs> Braze is out. I won't get off this rap, but. Mm -hmm. Honeycomb Braze got out, and when he got out, he, something I see, not just Honeycomb Braze, all these niggas is getting out. It, your celebration getting out is something people watch, you know, on the internet, right? Yeah. Like, if you don't get out right, you know what I mean? Niggas yeah. like, he ain't going to be all right. Get you know, a new like car, Rilo, get when Rilo come out. Nigga, this come out is serious. Yo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Am I right? Yo. Do you see that? Like yeah. I see it? Yeah. Like if you don't, like if you had somebody getting out, mm -hmm. you got to go over there with a jet or something. Yep. You got to, no, you got to. No, no. <laughs> it's crazy, <laughs> bro. Why though? I don't know. I think it's just one of them things to celebrate and, and I don't know, bro. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't understand that whole thing with marketing, but. Uh, I feel like when you get out of jail, you do have to come out with a with a banger because the internet moves so fast, people will forget. Like the Rallo had his moment, now they're gonna move on to Honeycomb Brazy, and then they're gonna forget him, and then they're gonna move on to the. So I just feel go like go Yayo for the come on, go Yayo. I'm waiting to see what happens. <laughs> see what I'm saying? It's tough because people was people will scream free you, free you, free you, and then only support you for a month, and then when you get out, you old news. Is it only for the young kids though? Because no, Twisted Black came out. I watched it. I was about to say, Twisted Black came out. He didn't come home in no jet. He didn't come home in no nothing but big. All that matters is what I'm telling you. Honeycomb Brazy come home in a truck where the sheriff dropped him off. Hmm. And like, okay, what are we going to get from this? Like, we're yeah. here at the internet uh, substation waiting, right? Yeah. To say, what are we going to get? Okay, what is he going to do next? Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yeah, no, I mean, he he dropped two uh, videos. I heard they were banging, went, too. Yeah, that went trending, but... Like, one of them went to the sky. One of them went yeah, crazy. The, yeah, crazy. The, first one the, went first the, one. the first one went crazy, but, you know, he's 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 on the blogs right now going crazy. I, I guess he's into it with uh, Jay Prince. Mm -hmm, because he I didn't... Seen that. Yeah, because he said he didn't pick him up in no, in, no, in nothing like how Pimp C got picked well, up Well, wait a minute. When you say Pimp C, that's why you mess up with me. Uh, Y'all watch the show. He said he better than Pimp C. That's yes. why I did not feel that. And I got a, I got a text from uh, uh, allegedly uh, speculated to be him, sent it to me, saying, you know, think these niggas out here don't know I supported Pimp. And it's a letter that he had been writing about Pimp. But you cannot play with Pimp C when yeah. it come down to Texas. Yeah, he's a legend. And and when it come down to music, I'm not saying you not, you might Do be you lyrically think he's better. better but Do you think he's better than Pimp C? Not as a package. I don't not as think, a package. Yeah, nah, I don't. And I think you can't really compare them. You can't. Like two different times. Two different. Talking about two different. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I think Pimp C, like you said, the whole package and just. I mean, I don't know. On I a rating from on a rating from one to ten, how hard is honeycomb to you about a seven and a half eight i like honeycomb because he telling his story like anybody telling their story you, i can't i can't hate on it um i mean he's not the best rapper that i heard but he, he decent i like honeycomb because it's real i know it's real when i did my interview with him he was talking to me you could just feel it the energy like it's just you know mm. Wow, I, I I feel the same way. I I think like he, he shot his own cousin. He, hard, he paralyzed man. his own cousin. I think he hard. Like he he hard. It, it, it to me it's just it's it's authentic. Yeah, yeah. When Honey Comb is just authentic. Man. But saying you better than Pimp is like you messed up with that. You got to you got to give us some more hits. For that. <laughs> so yeah. you think he's just doing that just for the clout, right? Yeah, now? he just he just going he working the internet like like you know he playing on the internet. Yeah, he know what he doing. He know the blog is gonna pick it up. He doing it right. Wow. Do you get tired of seeing that? What the way how clout has become such a thing where people Man. are going like to the extremes just to get exposure and everything? Because even when you look at he what started a lot when of when you look at what <laughs> Ti <laughs> when you look at what Ti and his son is going through and um, what he did at the game, you're like, okay, is that something? And then I look on Facebook and see his older son have a album or a record coming out. So I'm like, is that for that, or Man, is that you, real, these or is days that? You never know. Bro, you have these to question days, you stuff never now. Never know. Tip of the drop too. 
Cause it's true. <laughs> it's tough. You, you, it, you. These days, you never know, bro. Like everything's so internet. Like it's it's crazy. Like with the, I remember eight years ago, it was like fifty percent street. 50% internet, you had the street niggas on Facebook, they wasn't <laughs> blogging. Nowadays, everything's so advanced, everything's so fast, mm -hmm. everything's super internet. Like, you don't know what's real or not these days. So. Wow. Man, your boy uh, Rainwater say uh, Big Ye Yevo fell off. Do you think he fell off? Big Yevo, yes. He gone. Just because you fall off don't mean you can't bounce back, but I definitely think... Uh, People get tired of the, the 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 three minute rap songs, no hook, just straight rapping through. Um, now, is Big Yavo a good rapper? Yes, but it's you. It, at certain times, you gotta elevate. It's levels. You gotta elevate, and it's just like, I mean, it, it, like like I told you before, the internet. It's about are you entertaining outside of the music? Are you opinionated? What do you like to eat? Are you going live? People want to see that from you. After a while, doing all them same songs straight through, it just get boring after a while. You're not really telling us anything. You know what I'm saying? Just rapping, just rapping. Nah, we don't see rappers. Rappers like that will never pack out arenas. Wow. And this, you tell me one rapper who can make a record, two, and these are great, good rappers. They just don't know how to make songs. They're great rappers, but they don't know how to make records. Real records that are gonna get played on the radio that can that any demographic can listen to. They that straight through rapping shit is dead. You're not gonna make money like that for a long time. ESTG did it for a minute and it just it, it gets old. You have to make records. You, you, it's levels, and you know, um, I, I it was a, a lot of them Fort Worth cats, great good rappers, can rap. Rap like they say, get uh, Big Yabo stole their style, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard that. But all that shit is the same shit. None of them have millions of dollars off music because they're not good records. They don't make you feel no type of way. Music is how how I make you feel. Does it make me want to get some money? Does it make me sad? Does it make me happy? Does it make me? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Does it does it motivate me to get out the bed in the morning to make money? That music doesn't make you feel. Music is about feeling. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why Sauce Walker's starting to get his flowers now. People didn't like Sauce in the beginning because he was super... Um, people hate when rappers say that you're still in their style and you try to take credit for everything. So in the beginning, people didn't like Sauce because he was coming at everybody's favorite rapper, Drake, Young Thug. But now if you go listen to Sauce Walker's records, it's soulful. It make you feel some type of way. It make you want to... A lot of these rappers, I know I'm rambling right now, but... Sounds Big Yabo was like, if I listen to one of his songs one time, I don't want to go back and listen to it again. Sauce Walker shit has feel, it, it has the soul in it. You you want to go back and listen to it. It may it may uh, he's talking about shit in it. He's talking about real life shit that's going on in the hood every day that anybody can relate to. A lot of these niggas shit aren't relatable. You just talking good good talking shit, but it ain't nothing. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? It's empty calories. Yeah, Big J Evo, like I said, I, I, I really didn't just get a lot of people said, oh, he, he and it's not the plug. And you people, know, people got to stop. They try to compare him to Big Evo. Yeah, but people, not to cut you off, people got to stop putting Big Evo on the island because he's not, it's 20 rappers I can name that fell off because oh, they couldn't. That's good. Why are we putting Big Evo out there good. like that? Yeah, Why that's we, real. We can't put him out there by himself like that. A lot of these cats don't know how to make records, and it's not just Big Evo. So, you know, everybody's saying Big Yabo. I seen the live when, you know, Rain Rain one, He said them. it on here, too. I was like, yeah, dang, but, man, yeah. like, what made him pick Big Yabo? Yeah, <laughs> and it's just like a lot of people that fell off, man. And it's like, because y'all aren't making good records. And I'm not here to call nobody out because everybody is only one song away still from millions of dollars. It only takes one hit. But from the look of it is they're all doing the same thing. It's no real creative process going on. I got to talk a, about. Hold on. Okay, so recently, um, did you see where D1 Music went in with um, Rick Ross on his music? Not only Rick Ross, but also Jim Jones, Jim Jones and... Who else was it? Um, was the, oh, oh, Meek Mill. And Meek Mill saying that all about their lyrics, right? Y'all have become a place 
where you don't have to be rapping about drugs, money, this, that, whatever. How are you feeding these young minds in a positive way? Mm -hmm. Do you think that he has a, a valid point? What are you saying? That they're, they're too, like, negative? Or, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, like... Lyrically. Because he also went in on um, Lil Wayne before and on Jay-Z before on the same issue. Yeah. I think, uh, shit, all these niggas talk about foul shit in their music. Um... I think, I mean, yeah, he has a point, but, I mean, but you got the internet now. Kids are going to listen to what they want to listen to. You see what I'm saying? And it's like, you you rap some positive shit, they're going to say you fell off where that shit's whack, but you go in there and say some negative shit. Look, on my Say Cheese platform, I can post, I posted a 13-year-old kid graduated high school in college. That did like 1,300 comments. But I posted about the Memphis murder rate, and that shit did 3,000 comments. Mm -hmm. People engage more with the bullshit. That's mm -hmm. right. People engage more with the bullshit. I can interview somebody right now that's a CEO or boss. I can interview Boss Talk. I can interview y'all right now. Not saying y'all not lit, but it's going to do a certain number. Right. Let me go interview a fucking Nate Boone, a mm -hmm. fucking serial killer. It's going to do millions of views. We gravitate to bullshit. Exactly. So it's just like, yes, we blame the rappers, but the rappers is just feeding it to what the fans want. You know what I'm saying? No, that's it's kind real. of like a catch-22 to where it's like, I get it, because I'm not... I get it. Like, I, I get it. I get man. what D1 is talking about. Bro. But it ain't going to change, yeah. man. Like, like this has been happening. D1 ain't the first person to come out and say, hey, I'm against certain things when it comes to material being spoken on in rap. Right. You know, it ain't mm -hmm. going to. And, 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 and people are still going to do their music. I think that's a part of it. I think you need the yin and the yang to keep yeah. this thing going. I really do look at it on an over level like yeah. that. You got to have both. But because you have you so know much I mean? of that. Think, right? because I think so, so. But because you have so much of that negativity, I know you. You, you you can try to find positive music, but it's it's like this little compared it's, to, yeah. you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I get it. So it's like, I mean, it needs to be a balance. Artists, there are artists out here that don't rap about violence. You know, mm -hmm. Currency, Larry June. Um, it's a lot of good rappers out here that um, that that are uh, that are kicking some cool play and shit. You know what I'm saying? It's just all about, people be wanting to hear that shit from certain people and that's not their brand. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to go listen to Chief Keef and Lil Durk and have them talking about positive shit. <laughs> that's not their brand. But there are artists out here that have a positive brand that y'all can go listen to, right. but fans don't think they're cool enough. People want the cool rappers to talk about the good shit, and that's not where... That, I, I don't know. I didn't make up the rules, man. I seen. I on, didn't make up the rules. I seen on uh, Trill Talk, no P.L. Talk, I seen about uh, Rod Wave taking... Lil Boosie. Fats, Lil Fats. He said Lil Fats is on some Lil Fats on and Boosies, really. I seen the Boosies, but I seen on there he was saying Lil Fat. Like, mm. do you think that it's cool? Do you think that I'm going to bring the Boosie part up, but these people are going back finding these people have said certain things that they said in songs. Right. Is that, are they parallel and it's too close? Because People say stuff. People go make platforms, do yeah. all this type of stuff. It's the thin line between copyright right. infringement and really it's that mm -hmm. person's art. What do you think about it? Man, that? it's crazy. Wayne did it. Wayne all, Wayne did it a few times. Jay-Z did it to Biggie. Like, um, it... <laughs> Man, I don't know. Like, B Boosie did it. <laughs> Rod Wave post Boosie do it. Yeah. And and I just interviewed Boosie's brother. I seen that. Yeah, no, I interviewed him again about again? the situation. Okay. It's crazy. And he said, well, shit, Boosie performed, Boos one of Boosie's biggest songs that he performs at all of his shows are one of them records where he he recited somebody's lyrics. Really? And, and, and he don't pay them. They publishing. So... Like like you said, it's a real thin line between that. It's a thin line. Is it copying or is it reciting? Is it paying homage? Well, but when you think about it, why is Boosie now all of a sudden? Is it because of the fact that maybe he's going through something? Man, monotone, he got, he got cases, people. he got stuff going on. It, it, even I heard stories about selling masters and all kind of stuff. Like, mm -hmm. what's going on? I mean, is this the? Is it just? 
is it a reason behind it is what I start to ask myself. Like, yeah. why is this now all of a sudden a big deal? You know yeah, what I mean? calling out what, Kodak? YG. Everybody. <laughs> they all getting it. You know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you have to go through and filter through what you it's will. Just, it's just, it, I mean, Boosie do it too, so I don't understand, like, why you tripping? Boosie does it too. Boosie it's multiple, done it. It's multiple records where Boosie is reciting somebody's lyrics, sampling somebody's song, and performing it at his shows. They should be getting publishing uh a, a publishing, uh, I forgot what it's called, but when you perf- when you recite somebody's thi- uh, uh, lyrics at your show or sample their their song at your performance, they're supposed to give it. It's for like the BMI, like publishing or some shit. Man, so it's like you doing the same shit. It's crazy. Um, I got a question. So what what are your views on um, Lil Nas X um, doing a Christian song? Lil Nas X did a Christian song. He mm. did. It. He he he, he really? did speak out about that the other night. <laughs> mm-hmm. Man, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I, where did this question come from? <laughs> I, I don't know, man. <laughs> that's crazy. I, I, I be thinking, is he really gay, or is that know, a gimmick? Gay. I think that's game. I think it's a gimmick. Is he? They said he had a Nicki Minaj. Uh, uh, Fan account. Bro, listen. I don't believe you. Is he really serious, gay? Bro. I really, I, but it's because you never know in these days and time. Mm-hmm. You, you deal with some of the craziest things, you know what I'm saying? Even when I just look at like all the stuff, I watch your show a lot, right? I seen you, one thing I seen me and, and me and Big D spoke about this too. You went live. Uh, no, you didn't go live. You went, you, you posted Charleston White. And y'all streamed it. It did a million right at like yeah. as soon as you posted. Right. And I was asking him like, "What's the benefits of that?" You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, did that help you or did that hurt you? Cause I be looking at numbers. Me yeah. and him talk numbers. Right, me and right, Big right. D, I'm talking about. He was like, "No, I don't think. I think that's the best way." To do. But I'm like, "Do we get paid?" Because they they turn yeah, me and this other dude talk, and he do it all the time. Shout out to Crisco. You don't. It turns yellow. Is what he told me until mm-hmm. they, you know what I'm saying? Until they, yeah, can, you don't get advertisement from live streaming. I don't think you see you what don't I'm get saying. Ads, you, there's no ads during that time. So right. did you did you like doing it that way? or Did you regret doing it? That I way? regret doing it that way after Big D told me. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> he told so me. Big D was like, "Why are you streaming? You don't get paid." Uh, around that time, I said, "Bad," but it does help. The, the premiere does help the subscribers know what's coming soon. That's right. So we get to early boosting views mm-hmm. to help the momentum go up in your viewership of the video, if I'm making sense. Mm. So it's really just like a promotional tool. But money-wise, it doesn't help you. So it's good to probably do it every now and again, but it's, it's not all It's good to do it if you got like a big interview or like something you really like, something that you like, that you take, you know, um, you know something that you like. I feel like it's good to do. But money-wise, nah. Not a good move. Hell no. Nah. Do every video over eight minutes. See what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. and see, that's free game. That's why we got that's why we got you in here. Because mm-hmm. you, you know, like I said, I respect everything that you are. Yeah, you are the biggest, here. you are the biggest to me, one of the biggest in the South for yeah. when it comes down to what we do here in our mm-hmm. region for sure. Yeah. By far. And one I got, of the dopest. You I got know a what I mean? Show coming, uh, I already soon know too. The, yeah. the podcast. I'm gonna ask you about coming. that podcast. Yeah, I got a podcast coming, it's gonna be fucking crazy. What's the name? Uh, angry the angry uncles. That's okay. you changed it. I changed it. Why did you change it? Because uh, instead of be, you know how um, you know now when you say things that people don't like, they call you an old head. Yeah, or yeah. You washed up. Yeah, yeah. So we just, I, I just wanted to get clever and just come up with uh, the angry uncles. So is there gonna be multiple? We say uncles. It's so not gonna be the multiple sa- guys on there. Yeah, it's talking. gonna be multiple guys, but I'm never gonna have the same lineup. It's, wow. gonna, it's gonna be. The homies, or I may have you on there one day. What's wrong with Clean there. Sweep? I like Clean Sweep too, but no, I like the Angry Uncles. You like Angry Uncles? It, it's a little more grit to it. Mm-hmm. It's more catchy. <laughs> it's more catchy. It's more catchy. Yeah, a little more grit to People it. People gonna yeah. wanna like what? What are they talking it's, about? Yeah, it's just whatever. Yeah. Like names mean a lot, but it, it really does. don't mean. No. It's just well, something. it initially means something for the people to. Grass yep. through it. Yep. I see you with the say cheese, the, yep. the, the dope jury. Listen, yep. man. And I don't give a fuck about none of this shit. Hold on, but we got to talk about something like say cheese is, you see, say cheese, we have to equate that to Sean Cod. Me and Big D mm-hmm. talked about this, so I got to bring it up. And I, I ask stuff now that I probably wouldn't ask if you were still living because we mm-hmm. talk about stuff in secret. Yeah. But do you feel like, like when you see the say cheese versus the Sean Cotton brand, 
you see Adam Twenty Two them, they do no jumper, but you see DJ Vlad, right. you see DJ Academics. Yeah, like do you ever think about sometime the building of your brand versus the building of your name? Yeah, I tried to hide myself. You see what I'm saying? In the beginning, I tried to hide Was that myself a for so long. No, I okay. didn't want people to know me at all. I wanted to hide myself. I wanted the brand to the speak privacy. for itself. I wanted whatever we posted to not feel like it was my opinion. Like I, I, I really like tried to hide from it, but it was just inevitable at, at over over time. People start finding out who I am, and then you know the Say Cheese brand is bigger than the Sean Cotton brand. But um, that's how I wanted it to be for a very long time. Until now, it's kind of like you gotta. People want to hear you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, I don't know, but yeah. But for you to, I mean, I think you camouflaged it long enough. You know, yeah. now it's time for, I think at some point, it's time for the Sean Cotton brand to it's flourish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I what I mean? I got a show coming with academics, too. What? Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Get out wow. of here. I, you ain't even did an interview with him, have you? We're about to. So, because he drinks a lot, so <laughs> it's hard to get in. But... Cause you don't drink a lot, do you? I don't drink at all. At I, all. Never, I don't think I've, I I don't, I've never drunk before. Oh, okay. Or smoked. And yeah. then I wasn't interested I'm, to. I'm, no. I'm scared to do that shit. I don't know why I'm just scared to smoke and drink. I don't know why. Like, mm. maybe so I don't feel do like, it then. Maybe I feel like I can't like. You can't hold it. Maybe like I'm, I'm scared to like it. I'm scared. Do you have an addictive personality? I I, I think I'm addicted to sports betting. Every okay. day I gotta bet. Even if I don't know the teams, I gotta like throw something at it. Wow. I wanna go back to DJ Academics though, because that's, yeah, that's, so that's, that's a Yeah, we so you so you see the Ocho Cinco and, and yeah, yeah, that's shit? Hard. We about to do the same Y'all shit. Y'all gonna kill it? Yeah. Like once a week, just talk about everything. Is it gonna be virtual? It's gonna be virtual. So when you gonna start? Whenever he stopped drinking. <laughs> <laughs> they got real- but he hit me, he he texted me two weeks ago. He said, Hey, I'm about to go to London. As soon as I get back, we're going. So I'm really waiting on I'm not well, I'm waiting on him, but I'm still doing my own thing. You right, know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got an interview and man. I I supposed to get that in me and A, me and A D talk a lot now. Yeah. You know, I really uh Charles and White and uh, them and us getting into it mm-hmm. made it to where I, now we, me and AD, done been on here twice. Damn, Charleston never came back here, huh? Well, we never did get him back. We we didn't. We decided to cut our ties. I just Damn. put it like that. But I see y'all doing crazy numbers, so I yeah, don't trip. Yeah, yeah. Charleston, you know? Charleston's my guy, man. Y'all been um, doing y'all things, so I can't. I listen. I there's nothing wrong with the culture and the hustle. Yeah. But one thing about us, and one thing about me, I've always the hustle. When I see your hustle, it means more to me than the individual most of yeah, the time. Yeah. People don't realize that. Yeah. I can see, like, the COVID shot, that stuff I'm excited about because I know them niggas won. I'm mm-hmm. crazy like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so when I see niggas, hustle. I look at the hustle more than yeah. anything else and be like, damn, that's hard. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm a hustler. Yeah. Now, when I see certain things, I be like, okay. It may, it motivates you, bro. That's all it yeah. does. Yeah, that, w- that was the last, uh, Big D's last text message was trying to get Charleston White. Oh, his show? Yeah, I asked him about that. that was I was like, "Nigga, thing. you ain't trying to get him no more." You know, well, I was, you know, they had a little relationship. I know, man. I know. He did that the interview. The only one he ever did with him was in here. Yeah, yeah. It, That's damn. the only one he ever did with him. Damn, it was in my store because yeah, it was a different angle, right? It was right here, pointing back yeah, the other yeah, way. Yeah. That's my boy. You know what I'm saying? Like damn, he yeah. used to do a lot of them in here. Yeah, he wanted to. Yeah, but you know, the thing I can say, man, is 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 that. Anything that's hustling and equating to the hustle, man, I ain't mad at it. But we got yeah. we got to talk about your fight too. Man, that's what I was about to ask. <laughs> <laughs> I heard about your fight, you really? know. But I, I really, look, to be honest, I was. Listen, look. I gotta say this. I was not we really. We watched part of we it. We watched it. No, I watched yeah. it. Dude. I was gonna watch Sean. I ain't yeah. giving nothing about none of the other. I didn't watch nothing else. Look. I was shocked because you was in the headline after Charleston. Uh, 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 you know, didn't do nothing. You know, far as being, yeah. uh, you became the headliner to me. Yeah, I did. <laughs> and that was the best thing. I, look, win, lose, or draw, I lost. But that was the best thing I did all year. Yeah, it was. It was something I I, I chalked off my bucket list. Bro, I called Big D. I said, "Man, that how's he emotionally?" You know, me and him talking. Yeah. But how's this nigga emotionally? He was like, "Man, he good, man." For losing, he said, "But uh, he just feel like he should." I'm. Yeah. We talk like this, nigga. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. he just feel like we. He shouldn't have wore the boots, man, like, bro. And look, me and him talking the same <laughs> thing when y'all phone because he was up yeah, there. Yeah, Like he came, you gotta understand. Came, that's my look, dude, he bro. He came to Arizona to watch that fight, bro. He was there. Phase on Love was there too. Yeah, he was my there. boy. I'm, I'm telling you, look, that fight. It really that shit really helped me out. Like, look, I was so scared. 
<laughs> you like, I gotta get out of here. I didn't think you were a no. fighter at all. No, 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 I wasn't. Like, that's why I'm saying, like, I really stepped out of my comfort zone. This, the nigga that I fought would winning. I know mm-hmm. we, we did. We interviewed him before. Was, he was in the fucking feds for nine years. I know. So look, <laughs> my, my game plan was to box him, not bra. Mm-hmm. But when I got in the ring, I fucking, Froze. everything that I learned, <laughs> I, it went out the window. Because he rushed me like a fucking street fighter. Mm. I'm not a street fighter. Yeah. He's like a real lie. He been in the feds. You practiced the box. Yeah. Like I was trying to box him. But when, when, when he rushed me, like the, he said, that's what Floyd told him to do. Cause I got reach. I just, everything that I learned from footwork to everything. That's why I was telling big D stop making excuses for me, bro. He won. Yeah. But everything that I learned went out the, went out the window. You got to understand you got people screaming. You got you thinking about who's watching on pay per view. You thinking about you thinking your, about all that when you in the what? ring. You're thinking about everything. You're thinking about his power. Does he have power? Is he gonna? I couldn't. I, he even told. He even did in his interview. He said he couldn't sleep the night before. Mm-hmm. I couldn't sleep the week of. <laughs> I, they made me lose ten pounds. Because he's like 170, I was like 195, so I had to meet him halfway. They made me lose 10 pounds, so I was drained. Drained. Like, I've never lost 10 pounds in three days. Have y'all? No. Mm -hmm. 10 pounds is a lot. So what did you do? Wearing, not eating certain foods. I had to run every day. I had to wear a fucking sweat. uh, The sweat bag, yeah. Everything. So it was like, and the dude uh, will winning, like, he's fearless. Oh yeah, he didn't want to lose to a blogger. No, so he wanted it more than me. Yeah. I'm in there just trying to survive. He's in there trying to put me the fuck away. So, look, I'm not embarrassed about it. I did call Big D the next day. I said, I Dent. told you. I said, I said, Big D, is my career over? He That's said, what he told me. He told me everything, bro. I'm keeping like, it real with like, you. Yeah, he was like, I said, bro. No. I said, bro, is my career over? Bro, he, he said, told no. me. He said, no, nah, bro, you're not a fucking boxer. I promise. He said, he told no. Me. He said. He said nobody at your level, academics, Adam Vlad would never, never do, do that. that. No, right. he said, nigga, wear that shit. I said, bet. Yeah, he he told me he was like, man, because I, I asked him, that was, I was like, man, he ain't, how's the emotion? You know, because I know man, you don't I'm, know what people I'm gonna do because you basically you your name your your name whole weight yeah. your, your brand is is, look, is solidified. I want to do that shit like I want to do it again. You want to go again? Yeah, yeah, like, you can't lose the next I can't one. Lose no. the next one. I can't lose. Do you want to go up against him again? No, I want to do. Would else? you do a rematch? Yeah, I do a rematch, but I want to do a fight somebody in between. Fights. Okay. Yeah, I want to do a few tuna fights. So but it was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Like it was fun. Like Sauce Walker's my my boy. So like we afterward, it was cool. It, it, it didn't pin out the way I wanted it to, but it was like, all right, bet. Like, I'm, I fought in front of thousands of people. Like, I don't know. That shit was fun, bro. I'd do that shit again. Did I'm a, I'm a you, daredevil. Bro, did you it had, make you have, like, a new respect for boxers? Yes. You know how you be watching the fight? You be like, man, why he ain't do that? <laughs> it's like, now you understand, like, you don't want to, like, so. f- like, you don't want to come off. You don't want to, first round, you don't want to go too crazy because you don't want to, you don't want to tire yourself out. So it's kind of like you got to, it's a real, like boxing is really a science. It's really a science. Keeping the jab out. You got to make, like, I'm telling you, when I got in the ring, all of that shit went out the window. Because you're thinking about your girl's there. You don't want to get embarrassed. Your dad's there. You, your haters, your supporters. You don't but wanna, this is your first time. Yeah, so. you don't want to let down your supporters. Pay-per-view. You don't know who's watching. People are having watch parties in Houston. You don't know his power, like it's, it was it was crazy. So that every, for everybody saying that, I don't ha- I I don't take anybody's opinion unless you've been in the ring before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because it's so easier said than done. Mm-hmm. It's so easier said. It's so many woulda, coulda, shouldas. I'm telling you, it's a different world. I think I think next time you'll have the right trainer, you'll have the right prep work. I think you know what you're going into. Yeah. That walk to that ring, I seen his face like he was ready to go. He was moving faster than what I would expect. He was moving like, boom, 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 I'm going. I was ready to get out the way. Like, whatever it's going to be, it's going to be. But... I don't know. I just, I just. Now you gotta learn. Now you have to learn how to meditate and be more focused when you get in there. Yeah. Block everything Man, out. I'm telling and just you. concentrate on the fight. Yes. Yes. Who yes. is the person that you would love to fight next? Uh, Who you maybe, wanna call out? Maybe Bosco, cause he backed out on me. Yeah, he did. So back, but like, he's a little bigger though. 
He looks gain weight. He looks. Nah, I'm talking about he's a little bigger than. He's Sasha bigger than dude. So. He's right. bigger than dude. But I don't think he got the heart that Wood got. Oh, okay. Wood yeah, got heart. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like I didn't lose to no scrub. I lost to a nigga who. You gotta understand. I had that that week up leading to the fight. I had so many Houston D boys and hood niggas talking about the stories of him fighting, and so he not no she not no scrub. And you were reading all of that. I'm reading before. all that. Like, you what know, the that's fuck? getting into your mind that's and what messing I'm up saying. your mental space. Like, I was just like, what the fuck? I know but, somebody who said they want to fight you. Who? Who? Money Moses said he wants oh, to he jump wanted in, in there. Oh, he wanted to get in there with you. Money Moses. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, yeah. after that, yeah. so he want to get with you. <laughs> Money Moses, man, Yo. he back there. Yeah. We can do it, man. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, but no, I'm talking about oh, podcast against uh, uh, interview. What you? What's your po- angry? That'll be a good angry girls. uncles. You would put angry uncles against boss talk one on one. We can't lose that shit, man. I bet he better not lose. Just <laughs> This is entertaining, man. But yeah, like I said, man, that that um that was like my highlight, the highlight of my year, man. When you did a great drawn. job, man. I don't think tell you me did. I did a great no, job. No, no, you I, did. No, just to go out first there, bro. Time. Yeah. Just to go do it. Yeah. Like ain't no who, ain't nobody else blogging ever did it like yeah. that. I see nah, that. Except, they scared. They, they, you don't see people go into that ring and be like, I'm gonna go in there and fight a rapper. Yeah, that ain't nothing normal. So I'm nah. proud that you would even do it. Ain't yeah. nobody. But you opening it. the doors for other people who might be thinking about it. For real, man. Go do that shit. That's just my. That's just my testimony to everybody. Like, find a hobby, like, outside of shit that you do. And right. Just find a hobby because when you find a hobby, like, going fishing, like, that's my new thing, like, going fishing. You like fishing? Yes, because I think of ideas. When I'm going fishing, I think of ideas towards, say, cheese. Mm-hmm. Like, when you just find a hobby and it has nothing to do with making money, your mind, your mind just floored. Like, you just think of the, the unimaginable. You see know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So... That was just one of my hobbies I had for the summer. It's just like I, I didn't plan on going pro or, you know, whatever. It was just getting away from say cheese and just, you know, I got to I, I got to ask him something. Is it still yeah. on the same subject? Sort of, because he mentioned bucket list. You said um, you crossed that off your bucket list. Mm-hmm. Give me one more thing you have on your bucket list that you want to do. Uh, damn, that's a good question. Really, uh, buying a warehouse. I want to buy a warehouse oh. for. Uh, I want to buy a warehouse for um, like uh, where people can come together and like shoot movies and uh, a production warehouse mm. where people can come through and do b- podcasting. I want to have half of it be like a a gym. Like I want to do like a a creative space, wow. like something like where uh Tyler Perry has in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. hard too. What yeah. he got over there is stupid. Mm-hmm. Uh, but smaller. But smaller. <laughs> but smaller. Yeah, nothing that crazy. Guy. Well, I yeah. want. I just I, like I said. I want to ask you, man. You got a big brand. Say cheese is huge. You know, yeah. when it come down to what you've been able to accomplish, but you got a lot of people that um, now they're being targeted a lot of times. Are there? Or they've done some things in the past. We're going to go to the Diddy situation mm-hmm. for a second. Like, do you sometime, you know, look at that and be like, damn, you know, like, I hate he going through that. Or do you think it's an honest trade-off? If it happened, for sure. But what it, what do you think when you see how people are coming back? It wasn't just him. It was Jamie Foxx. It was mm-hmm. it was a bunch yeah, of them. Lie. It was a bunch. It was because they had that New York thing going yeah, to where you could uh-huh. get, you know, you could really get with, yeah. with that situation. Like, what do you think about it? Like, when you when you when you uh, when you look at your brand and look at the mishap that can happen, that's bro. why I'm. That's you can why lose I, everything, man. That's why I'm. That's I'm scared of people because you never know their intentions. Mm-hmm. Like we don't know. I mean, now with Diddy shit, it's more than one person coming out. Everybody not lying. Everybody coming out. Everybody not lying. But it's like uh, it's a lot of people with money that are getting targeted for shit they did eight nine years ago. Like that's why I just try to. That's why I don't be in the club. I don't try to have too many girls. I, you know, I got my girlfriend. I don't do too much, uh, you know, mingling because when you have something, you never know what's authentic and what's not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, people scare me, man. You never know. You, like I said, you just never know. How do you avoid those situations? How do you how do you figure out a way to not be victimized or not be caught up if it's a scandal? Uh, right, now I'm not saying that theirs was a scandal, but what if it is a scandal? What if it's somebody lying? What if? How do you you know? Because yeah. you got because somebody can go come around way. you one day and just you know just not by, even intimately, and then all of a sudden walk out of the room and oh he raped me. Bruh, you see what I'm saying? Man, you gotta you just, be careful, you dude. You just never know, man. And you just gotta keep things documented, like 
Man, nah, you didn't. This didn't happen. You text me the other day, you you know, or mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. fucking know. You, I don't know, bro. I'm people. People scare me. You just don't know. Man, they got you films coming out with Cassie on the floor. And they say it's her. I don't know who under that blanket. Where where they saying he did this and all that. Fifty Cent having a ball with this man, shit. Man, I, I love Fifty Cent. Oh, he Cent. always yeah. posting stuff. Fifty, come Fifty, Fifty been talking already before all of this. Yeah. This ain't nothing new for Fifty. Yeah. And he always big. going on Madonna too for some reason. I don't <laughs> yeah. know why. Oh, uh, Fifty. Yeah, he's uh, yeah. always going in he got on Madonna. Some people, man. I, yeah. Some Big D done as well. Uh, he introduced me to GDP. GDP, 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 the spokesman, you you named him that, yeah. right? Like, yeah. what caused you to name it that? And just, because you met him before me and Big D. Yeah, because he, uh, we did a, I made a list talking about uh, um, the hardest cities to blow up out of. And I think New Orleans is the hardest city to blow up out of. New Orleans, Miami, Baltimore, and Ohio. Mm. I think them were the four places, to, the hardest places to blow up. Um, Miami's super hard to blow up, but I think New Orleans is the hardest. New Orleans haven't had a, a mainstream rapper since Wayne. That's been 30 years. That's real. Who can you name from New Orleans that they've had artists pop out with, with certain songs, but New Orleans haven't had an artist in over 30 years. Something's wrong with that. For them to have that culture, to have that accent, which I think this it's against them right now in the music world. Um, but I, 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 to my point, I made New Orleans the hardest place to blow up. And GDP, he spoke out about it, and I just named him the spokesman because he's a New, <laughs> he's a New Orleans uh, historian. That's what he you, knows about. But why do you think they're one of the hardest places to blow up? Uh, what New, do you think? Well, is well, going well I on? think I think I think New Orleans is the hardest place to blow up because of the murder rate. Uh, the hatred there is different. The hatred is so small. If somebody wants to kill you, they'll kill you. Um, the they they didn't have a DNA lab, which which where people could kill you and get away with it. So it made people more motivated to kill because they knew that it's easier to get away with murders. Mm -hmm. So that plays a part in Hayden, whereas though if you are going up or you have a chance to go up, they'll kill you. New Orleans is the murder capital. Mm. Um, And I think their accent plays a part in it too, to whereas though right now I feel like, and people love the New Orleans accent, but I'm talking about in music. Sometimes because they can't understand them. Sometimes it's hard to understand a New Orleans artist. It's, people just don't understand it. And, you know, they'll turn their heads from it. But I think New Orleans is about to have their time again. Um, they're doing their thing. Everything's set up to where Ratchet is cool now. You know, New Orleans is the is the, is the the city of Ratchet. <laughs> they go down New, through Louisiana, there. period. Yeah. Um, and then I think their beats, too. I think I think Baton Rouge kind of took a little bit of their flavor a little bit. Don't get me into this, uh, Louisiana. I love <laughs> <laughs> but I think it was just Baton Rouge's turn. So I think I think New Orleans is going to come back around. But I think Miami's number two, though. Miami's mm. super hard to blow up. Wow. Um, Miami's super hard with all their resources and the DJ Khaled and the Birdmans that right. live out there and they don't have a big artist. It's super hard. It's two, Who was I'm, the last big artist to come out of Miami? Miami. Tr- like Trick Daddy. Like on that level, right. it's artists that peaked for Miami. But like at that level, like... Oh, I mean, you had the little pumps in the city girls. Okay. But I, I'm talking about like a, a household. Well, city girls, little pump, they household names, but artists that Miami would be proud about. They haven't had that in 20 years. Give me your top five uh, music execs in the game. Um, I like Dame Dash. Um, damn. Top five, you said? Execs. Damn, I fuck with Dame Dash, man. And me too. Um, I like what he stands for. Yeah, yeah. I love. We've been in the room, and mm-hmm. he shut that room down when he stand for his people. Yeah, man. I love it, man. Um, damn, that's a good question. Yeah, make you think. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I like what um, I like what Yo Gotti doing. Okay. Um, I like what uh, you know, the whole QC thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like Gazi Empire. Um, just seeing young bosses, man. Like a lot of these dudes, I like. Shout out New Era Promotion. Um, they're Florida. They're based out of Florida. I would love for y'all to interview them when they come out here. Okay, okay. But uh, they 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 play a part in a lot that goes on in South Florida. Um, 
Like I said, shout out to Rain too. Not saying he's in my hey, top five. Yeah. <laughs> not, 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 not saying there's not, not saying there's like five people who's not yeah. bigger than him. But just me being here and seeing like it's his grand. passion. Yeah, yeah. He's passionate, man. And sometimes when you're too passionate, you scare people away. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm I'm one of them people too that's like super passionate to where like he's super passionate, man. And it's a lot of young cats out here who are really uh you know doing their thing and. Like even like half pint, you know, half pint's doing this yeah, thing. Yeah, he yeah, just, he, he just did the mixer it, yesterday yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like, you like, like stuff doing? Success. I like shit like that. He like working, that's he what, working. That's what makes shit fun. Like Dallas, and then what I was saying earlier, like the Dallas just not fun no more. The DFW rap music, mm -hmm. it's not fun. Not saying that uh, people got to come out here and beef and kill because I, a lot of people blame me for that. Like I was the mediator. Yeah, I got a call and they were like you the new Sean Cotton man. Uh, uh, something just happened. It wasn't no I rain. I said, man, get the hell out of my phone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, but it's just like with, for example, it, and it just happened again, but like um, Rainwater, Charleston Whitehead came on my platform and said something about rain, right? And rain called me and was like, man, I got to tell you about yourself. I'm like, damn, what? I'm thinking like a hundred different things. Like, what the fuck? Like, he was, how you going to let Charleston go? And it... That's how shit start because <laughs> everybody wants the last word. Right. Now, me want to come back on now, and say Now, Ryan wants to come and there's nothing wrong with it because like I just told Charleston in our last interview, I don't want any false allegations on my platform if somebody can't come speak and defend themselves. Exactly. Yeah. But then it turns into a messy thing for people look at it being messy when now everybody wants the last word and they keep coming back to your platform and now you looking like the messy one because it turns into he say, she say. It. So it's like, nah, man. Uh, but I like, like I said, I, I I like what Half Pint's doing. I like what Rain's doing. I, are they are they seeing out of hour? That's cap. Um, I think uh, right now because you never know with no, Rain. I, I think I think Rain is uh, Rain is targeting like he always do. He seen that's the, he, something that Big D told me seen about Rain. In the bathroom, he calls what he said. Man, Rain <laughs> is this, and Rain is targeting what is, whatever he's targeting. And he's on a mission. That's all. And and I learned from Big D that you just got to take him for what he's doing and just let him go where he's going. Think, but you ain't on the bus with what? him. You just riding the wave. I, just I don't think know. All this is fun. Like the, the mixer, the mixer he did yesterday. It just make it brings stuff to life. Like it was a success too. It was yeah, a lot of people in there. It was a success. Um, and it just like it just like I said, these artists in Dallas now. Well, period. It's not a lot of entertaining going on. Like when you had Yayo Mo three. Like, it was just niggas would go live. Like, it was just a lot of content being made and people were, like, a lot of personality being splashed around. Nowadays, it's a lot of, like, I don't agree with, like, saying all oh, artists suck, though, either. Like, that's not something that's you should something, say. Yeah, that was something that like was having, said on, 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 on a big platform like yeah, yours. Ha like having, having, a, having, a, having a big platform, like, you should never say stuff like that because people get discouraged. But, I mean... There's not of lot. There's not a lot of artists with the full package. I'm gonna say that. Yeah. The thing is, I wanted to ask you another question about you just mentioned Rainwater, but is do you feel like Mo three is more talented than Lil Wayne and Tupac? Fuck no. <laughs> Rainwater. <laughs> Rainwater, <laughs> shut the fuck up, dog. And NBA young boy too. He had yeah, to get he him said, too. Yeah. You know, he said NBA young boy is more talented than. Tupac uh, got more, he's not more, more talented, more established. That's what yeah. he said. Yeah, nah, he nah. Mo three, see, Mo three was good because he could hit every angle. He could make love songs, heartbreak songs. He gonna he gonna tell you the good and the bad. He gonna tell you the consequences. Yeah, you can go kill somebody, but this will come with it. It's not just the one side stories. Um, man, Mo, Mo, Mo three was just a one on one man, and uh, I don't think. Uh, I don't think we'll ever see an artist in the city with that type of backing. Mm -hmm. I think, like, right now, you got the big extra plugs just doing this fucking thing. Mm -hmm. Killing it. But it was like, we grew with Mo3. Like, we we seen Mo3 fucked up, bummy, wearing fake designer. Like, we seen Mo3 homeless, saying he was homeless, right. selling CDs. Like, we, we're not going to see that grind no more. And it's nobody's fault. Is this the stage we are in hip-hop? The different generation. You can't sell CDs no more. I remember Mo3 slanging CDs. So we'll never get to see, I don't think we'll ever get to see that type of growth anymore um, in, in the DFW, man. And that was, 
I remember I did the the Dallas vs. Everybody record, and I put all the Dallas rappers on one song. Fat Pimp, uh, Lady Savage, everybody on one record. And I put Mo3 at the end of the record, man, and he killed they ass. I'm going to ask you about them. I, I, I got to ask you another question, too, because I'm not going to hold you too much longer. But what, um, man, do you think... Give me a top five interviewers in in in, in uh, just period. Mm-hmm. Top five interviews mm-hmm. viewers. Damn. Top five block in Texas. Do we want to do Texas? Or no, what? period. Okay. Damn, gotta go, Vlad. He OG. Mm-hmm. Vlad, that's the one you always uplift, and I ain't yeah. gonna lie. I, I like Vlad, man. I do be on Vlad a lot on here. I let yeah. people go in, but it be just because the culture is so it's so parallel and man to it's certain things that like when when he go with a Tyrese and you have to try to pick. Okay, then you got Kim and Kim for sure gonna come on and give him hell. But I'm like, man, but Slim then Thug mentioned him. Slim the other Thug day. just mentioned him. Like he catch a lot. Hell yeah, he catch he's, some. He's, he be catching some boulders. He, he, he said for stop going on Vlad because who you was talking uh, to? He, he was talking, talking about now, Boosie. They said Boosie, but he was just. I think he was in general with that okay. statement. You know, but you say Vlad because Vlad showed you the game. He right. showed everybody. A lot of people. No, I got. I ain't gonna lie. I learned a lot from you, but more because I came in late. Yeah. I, I watched what you was doing. Yeah. I watched what. Uh, I watched Breakfast Club a lot. Yeah. If you really think yeah. about it, yeah. I was like, I'm a, I'm for the beat Breakfast Club. Mm-hmm. That's who I want to try to. I'm, I'm right. going at Breakfast Club. <laughs> right. But it was like <laughs> in a way from the south where our people would. But then this was an independent thing, and I mm-hmm. think that what made me different. But at the end of the day, man, just. Um, Top five. I don't want you to try to get bro, out of it, bro. It's really going to be hard because I need I mean, the top five, baby. I like, I like what No Jumper is doing as far as I like how he. Um, it's a lot of people that uh, I like how. I don't know. I like No Jumper, man. It's a lot of shit that I don't agree with, but I like his format of he brings a team on and now he uh, he's feeding a lot of different people. I, I like that. But they could. AD was over there. But that's my boy now, like yeah. I told you. Um, I'm surprised they don't wreck out is what I told AD a lot like how do y'all did with the politics of what y'all dealing yeah. with up there how do y'all be in the same room but the business is business yeah. I get it but this thing could spill over they easy can. so that was yeah. a thin line right there you that's even why I never you just had no one run off on the, no, they just run a nigga off I just talked I to AD that. earlier today yeah. like and it wasn't even about him he didn't say nothing about the dude he said they, he didn't say nothing about us E but like damn like, like but when he seen us you know what I'm saying yeah. he took off but also, no jumper said he ain't beefing with him no more. Yeah. You know, with with with, with AD and him. so that mm-hmm. was hard too. Yeah, I like I like Gilbert Arenas podcast. Gilbert, okay, uh, okay. Uh, Gilbert Arenas, he has a uh, Gilbert Arenas. That's what it's called. That's Super it. dope. Mm-hmm. Um, shit. Shout out to shout out to uh million dollars worth of game too. Man. That's four. Um, yeah, one more. But it's a lot though. Like I'm on YouTube. Every my girl be like, man, you always on your. I'm just such a student. <laughs> Like I'm just such a student on how can I get better? Better mm-hmm. and like Big D, like Big D was a hell of an interviewer. He, he had the voice. He was serious about it. He had yeah. the voice. I love he that was voice. Serious, yeah. About yeah. It. Like that, you know, me and him would talk about things like how y'all be building relationships because I tear relationships up. This yeah, what <laughs> yeah, because he was, yeah he wasn't good at that. He like man, you keep you keep her, like me and like me and Faison became tight. Like after yeah. I interviewed him, he was trying to figure out like how you do that, man. Yeah. But, to hell, I think he did good with Nate Boom, which it ain't man, much. I mean, look, he did good with that. And the thing is, with man, like we could talk about Big D all day, but after the Nate Boom interview, he was like, "Man, you should interview him." And I'm like, "Damn, bro, you did this your shit at six hundred thousand. Like, mm-hmm. I can't backdoor this." He was like, "Nah, bro, you can do it." And it's just like he was just Big D was so unselfish, like, and like, bro, like, shit, it's it's, it's crazy, bro. Like, Damn but, but, but but with Big D though, I, I like his interviews because yeah, of his. Deep voice, like mm-hmm. he had like a Vlad type of voice, yeah, like a real distinctive voice. A radio what, voice. what made you? You said uh, Gil and Wallow. What makes their dynamic? Because they're out of Philly, right? Yeah, they're out of Philly. That's what it is. I forgot uh, about that. Yeah, they out of wasn't Philly. Even thinking about that. No, I thought I, about I, it I, now. I, I just, um, <laughs> I just think they're consistent. I like Funny Marco. Funny Marco, a, that's what I'm saying. I don't so really have Funny a, Marco. Your number five, because you still. I don't you know, really. Oh man, you see, gotta you gotta narrow it down. Who's your number five? Is say cheesy number five? No, nah, I don't like he to put myself. He can't in braid himself okay. in that. I mean, uh, he don't like to do that. Man, this is a lot. Man, it's a lot of platforms. Um, I would put Funny Marco number five because mm-hmm. of his humble beginnings and slowly coming up in academics. I like academics a lot. 
DJ Academic is dope. I, I've been watching him. Like, I, I've been watching. Damn, I, I go look at him like, damn, this nigga here. It's like, some of the stuff, like the Sasha Santana thing threw me off. Yeah. I talked about that when he we was in Chicago. He has Chicago. a gift, gap. He has like, a gift what the gap for sure. Like, like, I wish I could stay on streaming all day and just talking about shit. Yeah. And I think I can, I can, but it's just like, he just has the gift of gab and the way he <laughs> really does his research and studies. And I, I, I respect academics, man. I, I really like, I really like how, how he's carrying it. You think that you think you could have handled the Sausage Santana situation? You think he handled that the right way? Man, is it? Is, yeah. How do you handle that? You it ain't you got to It's a, like <clears throat> like I just said. It's an LL with Saucy Santana because it's like let's just say you beat him up. Oh, you beat up a, a gay person, or if you lose from a gay person, you lost to a gay person. Damn. Or uh, you say something out of pocket, you get you get uh you get canceled, canceled like the baby. That's right. Mm -hmm. that's so right. there's no there's no win there's no wins out of that. You know what I'm saying? And uh yeah, it's crazy. I man. think, like I said, my biggest my biggest thing is, man, when we're doing this whole podcast, you told me things was gonna work out. You don't remember that, but I got it on tape. You know what I'm saying? You mm -hmm. said y'all gonna be doing good. I got all that. We did what we do. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. We still yeah. been hanging in there. You know, I think sometimes I don't, I'll be confused by YouTube. Look like it's, I'll be like, they can't see me. Nobody can see me. Mm. How do you, how do you deal with that algorithm? Do you have a rep? I ain't, gonna, all in your I ain't gonna lie to you. I, I don't take money for interviews. I pay now. I pay people to come on my shit. I pay. Like, it ain't millions of dollars. But I definitely pay. Like, if it's somebody that I know, sometimes I'll have a fucked up week and I'll be like, man, I only made this this week. Man, let me pay to get FRBJ main in here and yeah, get I my see. shit high. Yeah. Let me pay FBG butter. Let me pay somebody who's gonna get my shit. But I pay. I pay like I weigh, but I, I always make sure whatever I pay him, I know for a fact I'm gonna, gonna make, make it back. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's just one thing to everybody who has a platform. You gotta pay to get that consistent number, but make sure you not getting finessed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like everything I pay, I know that like when I do Charleston, you know Charleston gonna do it, right. gonna go crazy. Um, but definitely, uh, yeah, that's what I do. What about Batman Kevo? You ain't, have you did him lately? Oh, uh, no, nah, I haven't. Yeah, he, yeah. He's been out of the country. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. the other guy, didn't I see, did you go to his, they they, they sold all his cars, the, 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 the one guy. On me in the Hellcat. Yeah, I bought, yeah. I bought two yeah, of his I cars. Yeah, I seen you. Yeah, I, I seen you. I was cars. like, this nigga is going to get them cars. Are you yeah. going to give them back to him? I can't say that. on, on the, <laughs> cause, cause, Yo, it was a lot of FBI and U.S. Marshal. Really? There. It was an FBI auction. Um, U.S. Marshal auction. Damn. When I came in there, it was marshals all over the place. And it was a lady that walked up to me, a black lady. She probably watching this shit that, the way they was on me. <laughs> she was like, so uh, which car are you about to buy? Like uh -uh. that. And I was like. She already knew who you was, bro. Probably so. No, real talk. And damn, it's crazy you say that. And no, it's the truth. I asked my girl. I was like, I was like, damn, shit. I was like, oh, no. I don't walked out. I was like, forget this. I, I ain't buying like, nothing. I don't know. But then it was chilling. And then. I had one, two cars, and then I just, after I won that second car, it would just came uncomfortable. You so right, I gotta get the hell out of here. I gotta get out of here, cause it's like, now y'all gonna be looking at, I'm, and I'm legit, but it's just like, I don't even want y'all on me, like. Yeah, yeah. And, and on me, I did talk to Omi afterward, he didn't know that I was going, but, okay. but just off record, if y'all get me, he was happy. So, <laughs> he was happy that I went, cause one of them joints, he, he, he's attached to yeah 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 that's that's one thing about it I, I love the way you you know like i think you got a good heart bro yeah like when it come down to real definitely bro trying to do the right thing man a lot of i do so much shit, life, bro i get a lot of flack but i do so much shit offline like that if only people knew but i'm not the type of person for people to find out like if you know you know if you don't you don't like it's cool like you still got the land and the, and yeah. the fa weed factory yeah 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 I mean yeah, the, the weed, weed farm. farm yep I got the weed farm that's a factory that's in Oklahoma so it's it could be a factory right yep. yeah. yeah for real <laughs> Legal, 100% That's legal. That's right. So I'm in real estate, too. So I yeah, just, I seen that. I seen a house or something you just posted, right? Yep. So I'm buying, well, I just bought land, a lot of land. Fort Worth, actually, is the fastest growing city in the world. Wow. Mm. So if y'all looking at any investments, Fort Worth, Fort is, Worth is it. Fort Worth is it because all them oil machinery factories out there, uh, not a lot of traffic like Dallas yet. Um, but it's growing like so crazy. It's a lot of land out there. I bought a whole lot, so I'm about to build my own neighborhood out there. A whole lot, like yeah. like Boosie got the whole yeah, situation. Yeah, but I'm gonna build. 
I, Fort Worth, they got to do the zoning for me because mm-hmm. they zone it for you to where you can only build a house or a townhome or okay. a duplex. So they tell you what you can build right. based off of the design. But I'm and I'm, I'm thinking about giving away a house. Mm. Wow, to a, to, be. to a home to like a family in need, like a mm-hmm. real family in need. I'm gonna give away. You gotta do I'm your research into them. Yeah, I gotta make sure it's legit. Have you ever thought about doing commercial real estate? Yes, yes, like uh, yes, like <laughs> man, what? So I gotta ask you about um, something else. I thought about and and he be on my show. You ain't got a TV. You started mm-hmm. out a long time ago. Right. I seen you in Arkansas doing some things one time. You were like, I, I, was it Arkansas? No. I've been in Arkansas was, a few times. It was, times. a few yeah. times. Like, like how, do, what do you think when I when I bring up Gutter TV? Have you guys got a relationship? Uh, Man, we, we had a back and forth online. To me, I be trolling. Like, I don't have no, but he's a legend. Like, he, he started off doing this shit, like, back when it was, like, the fucking DVD era. Yeah. Like, I could never hate on nobody who paved the way for this shit. Like, he was one of them guys. It was just a lot of times he throw, like, shade. And it's like, bro, you're an OG. Like, and you're still young. You can still come and do this shit and make crazy money mm. if you wanted to. Like, you just got to, it's just a new time. You just got to change with the times. And I feel like sometimes he feels, like, Sometimes he kind of like, he kind of feel kind of like, like a old head, an angry uncle. He's an angry <laughs> uncle. Sometimes he 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 gives off angry uncle vibes. But I'm here to say that, nah, bro. Like it's still you're still young. People still fuck with you. You can still come back, do crazy interviews, make money. Like people, it's enough space in this for all of us. But a lot that's of why when Big D told me he was starting to do interviews, I didn't say no. Big D, don't do it. I do interviews. I went and did an interview on his shit multiple times to support him. And I'm talking about niggas who start to do interviews. It's enough media for all of us. But let me ask you this though: Like, have you ever you just you just complimented Gutter TV for, yeah. for being in this game, Come on, bro? Paving the way, like, you, like that's one of the things that he did say on here. He was like, "Man, he never showed you know show me some show me Bruh, some love for what I done." Nah, you know? man, I always paid showed everybody much, love. It, what I look like paying Vlad love and not him love. That's what's wrong with black people now. We quick to. Show love to the white man, and I, I right. always it was gutter TV. Always throw man, I'm the OG, and I y'all paved the way. Yes, you did pave the way, bro. Like it's a new time, and I give you your credit, I give you your love, and you can still be doing this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's nothing. He still deals with like the like he got Moonwalk and a couple more artists. He's still dealing with the rap side a lot of it. I know you say you getting out of it though. Is that something that that like can a, can a person today's time? Yes, he could make- come to me and be like, "Yo, Sean, I got these artists. You got a platform. I got a platform." Like Rainwater, me and Rainwater be on the phone. I be like, "Rain, bro, we go crazy with the artists together." This shit that the internet don't know. Yeah, because the people be yo, Sean, don't fuck. I. Talk to Rain two nights ago, like man, nigga, you ain't even called me back about this. He got a cold ass female artist in San Antonio. Damn, I'm like, bro, I got the platform. You do the street work. We go 50 50. I got the distribution company. I can upload the record. We can do crazy promo together. And he won't he won't call me back. So sometimes I'm questioning, like, damn, is niggas in secret competition? Because yeah. everybody speak this. Come together, shit. Till it's time to that's come whole, together. That's real. But or maybe like, he checking his options. Maybe that's so. Real. Before that's, he come man, back, he to don't, you. you don't owe me shit. You know what I'm saying? But but I do want to say this though. Like I don't have no problem with gutter. I don't have no problem with none of these people. If people came to me with an artist that I liked, I, we could do this shit together. I I'm bro. I'm not in competition with nobody. It, it's it's plenty of money out here to get. Mm. It's plenty of money out here to get. Cause you and gutter both. Y'all dope, bro. I got yeah, go to my no, guy. I don't right have no now. problem when with gutter, man. I see both of y'all, I be like, damn. I don't have no problem niggas, with gutter, man. man. I be, yeah. I just be trolling, man. Like, I just be, I, cause I know how the internet work. Like, yeah, I know yeah. how the internet work. Like, so, I don't have no nothing against gutter, bro. Like, we looking for you to like, like you, you know, we got fifteen oh one is definitely in Houston, and yeah, we. I've been waiting on you. I'm like, he gonna make this big record company here in Dallas, yeah. and. We're going to have a big, you know, it's Sean a lot Cotton. Of, I was thinking Sean Cotton for the, the break. Label, I thought yeah. you would make that label deal for all these young niggas to man, get on, it's, man. It's possible, it's possible to do. I just haven't found nobody that I love. Like, Yeah. I like the zillionaire though, Cat. You like him? I like him. I like that he don't talk about, he really, like, you, you, you could, 
it's authentic. I could tell it's authentic. Like the streets love him. He got the image. He looked like the he looked like a Dallas nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like he he's the epitome of a Dallas cat. Uh, I, think, I, I like the Zillionaire Doe cat. I like the the Montana 700 cat. Um, I just uh, I I think them cats can do something because you know they got their own motion. They already having a little bit of paper. Um, I, like them, them cats. I I feel like I can run it up with them. Let me ask you something. You got you got uh, T Jones was the last guy you interviewed out of East Texas. T Jones. Like like like. Do you pay attention to the East Texas artists? Yeah, I'm not. I'm you see not, what I'm, I'm saying? Not, because you the like yeah. people look at you like you the guy that when people see you I, and I told half the same thing. Certain people they look at if I can just get with that guy, yeah. if I could get on that platform, if I could link see, up with that yeah, dude. Yeah, but it's easier than. And that. I get it. They saying that and the work got to be yeah, there. Yeah. But do you see any of they stuff? The motion, you I, know, Al D stupid in East I, Texas. I, I see. I see everything. Like I, yeah, I, I've interviewed him before. Uh, he did go to jail though. He two, did. didn't he? Didn't he go to jail for like two, three years? Yeah, but you he's out. T. Jones? T. Jones. Yeah. yeah, but he's been he's out. out now, though. Yeah. Uh, you had Seco P I, from down there, and then he did. He bought the the last one that really went yeah, stupid. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not geographical when it when, when it comes come down to town. I'm not, bro. Like I, I, I'm not like Dallas, not Dallas, Arlington. Like I, it just got to be something that I'm passionate about. I'm not out here signing artists just to. Stay relevant. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like a lot of people, I think they just want an artist just to say they have an artist. Like, I don't want to waste nobody's time. And then I have a lot of problem too with when I sign artists, they think it's just say cheese and that's it. Like, no, I can post you, but if you're not doing the groundwork, it's not going to become full circle. So uh, a lot of artists, they just want to just get say cheese, say cheese, say cheese. And I can't over say cheese you because they're going to get tired of you. And then it's going to look biased. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, uh, you got to have the groundwork. That's why I said I I wouldn't mind working with Rainwater because he's in those clubs. He yeah. talks to the he DJ. He does work, don't he? He does the groundwork. I do the internet work. Boom, we out of here. We got one. Easy. And That'd then, boom, hard. we bring in five more. Let's do it like that. Let's run that play. Like, people talk shit about Rainwater, but people people fuck with Rain. Yeah. Like, even Half Pint, too. Like, me and, me and Half Pint, we bumped heads, but... Yeah, have y'all talked since we had our... Uh, yeah, I told him I have a problem. Good. I, I told him that... The car I, thing was serious with man, you when you that, first came man, on there. that was a car. You loved that car. <laughs> and I told that nigga about that I when he was here. Looking at my, yeah. I was just looking at that car last night, like, bro, like... And I just couldn't do... I just felt played, like, doing business with you, but your homie got my car? That's like... Look, that's like... <laughs> that's like me and Moses cool, right? Yeah. But I owe you money. But Moses, I owe you twenty thousand dollars. But but uh, Moses, uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 like, yeah. You cool, but Sean, got yeah, pay nigga, me my money. yeah, you got my money, man. Stop playing. You know already what it yeah. is. You the one link me with it. Uh -huh. I think that was more where it was at. You, That's what I'm saying. Like, you look different. You got this different glow about you. You know, you you I, the fatherhood thing. How's yeah. that working out? Man, for I you? love it. I want all girls. We gotta talk about this. I know he said he want all girls. I, I told him no. You girls. need that one boy. I want all girls, want and, no and they, none of them playing basketball. Like I want them to be on like some. Um, How did that change you, man? It made me more patient. Okay. It made me more patient. It made me uh, think before I do certain things. Um, it made me uh, just calmer. And um, it made me just want to like, and it's like, not say fuck these artists and fuck these people, but just like invest back into my family. Wow! Like That's maybe the most like think thing. about the future. Like mm -hmm. damn, okay, all this money I'm making, I'm putting this into this ungrateful ass nigga. I could be putting this into, I could buy this land for my daughter for when she turned eighteen. Yeah. This shit yeah. worth. I yeah. bought it for twenty thousand, but now it's worth eight hundred thousand. Yeah, mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying? Yeah, now, yeah. We, now I'm thinking like long term instead of instead of short term. And uh, I want all girls. I don't want they none of them playing basketball. I want all of them play tennis. No, How no. many kids you want? I want like five. Ooh, five? You sure? I, I got four. Five. You you want five? I want five. Four yeah. or five? Why, why four? Damn, why 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 you stop? Why why? What's wrong with four? I think. Man, you do what you can, man. Grandkids you know come saying? after that. Yeah, man. we got grandkids. So. But big, you got a big family or nah? No, just me. You well, about boys? no, he has a huge family. I got a huge family, but I'm not. Like, into do y'all have like do, like Christmas is the house pack? No, 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 no. no. He don't See, I want a big. I want it to be like home. Oh, watch Home either. Alone. Yeah. yeah. When it's just, it's just like fun. Like it's, it's a just lot, like, man. But it's it's a lot that come with it. But it's it's like 
It's fun. You it's love like, family. It turns into a gang. It turns into a mob. It turns right. into a movement. Right. It turns into money. You can not. It turns into a business. It turns into what? Like how Levar Ball got his kids now. Lord. A brand. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I man. I gotta go back to Lil Boosie for a second, cause I was like, man, you interview his brother all the time. Yeah, Do you ever brother. think that's gonna like affect you and Boosie's I relationship? Don't see how. You don't even nah. cause you just doing the interview. Yeah, I'm just doing the interview. We post Boosie all the time on so what, say what, what uh what I mean, cause that's something that they they struggle with. That's touchy. You know what I'm saying? That's a touchy situation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it but is. at the end of the day, it's like, man, you want to see him get a, get through it. No, bro. and I said that in our Damn. last interview, but I only speak on the things that Boosie speaks on on Vlad. That's all. So I don't go into the personal shit. I only ask some questions about what Boosie said about him on Vlad. Outside of that, if it's not on the internet, I don't. you don't got to tell me. Wow. So I just make sure I keep it, everything that's on the internet, on the internet. I don't try to, you know, Boosie's a legend, but, you know, niggas just still got to be fair, too. You know what I'm saying? You going on Adam 22? Y'all, you going to get make the number? Yeah, I'm going no, I'm going no jumper. He been calling me for the last three years. I just ain't been to L.A. Yeah, since think, the pandemic. I think you should go because, like I said, it's every... I seen Half Pint on there and... Uh, and he got a lot of flack for that, right? <laughs> <laughs> what you... I mean, you know, you know how to interview, too, though. You've been... Yeah. You, you've been interviewing so many people, but when you first got on the other side of that table, yeah. how was that it's for you? It's a difference, isn't Man, you, it's certain, different, right? certain things you got to say because people are holding your word to a certain standard and, you know, it's just certain words you got to say and, but, you know, can't put no... Can't throw nobody under the table. Just yeah. how I said yeah. the Big Yabo shit. Why just him? Why y'all just saying he fell off? Yeah, yeah. A lot of artists fell off. Step back and look. Yeah. And pay attention. They changed not as big as they was. No. They cars ain't as fast. That's real. <laughs> they The weed they smoking, not, they blunts not as big. It's a lot of niggas who fell off over the years, bro. Yeah, They yeah. still got the same jewelry that they had. You know, jewelry rappers, God, they got to change their shit every year. Yeah, yeah. That's why I hate, ooh, rappers. It's expensive. It's such being a rapper. It's expensive. Because you can't do nothing you did last year. Every year got to be, it's a lot of rappers who fell off. So, mentioning Rainwater, just mentioning Big Abo, that's he's full of shit for that. <laughs> and I love, and I fuck with Rain, but he's full of shit for that. Wow, it's man. a lot of rappers who fell off, bro. How do you how do you plan to maintain this success? You know, a lot of people talk about Master P, and I know Slim doesn't say it like yeah. like Master P fell off. Like we talking about the fall off thing, but he don't look fall off to me. He look yeah. like he living real good. But Cereals like, how do you and noodles? That's what I'm saying. The cereal, noodles, all the stuff he doing on the back burner. But how do you avoid? How are you going to keep the success going forever and, and change um, generations? Keeping it innovative. Uh, Keatlin, what I mean by that is, like I say, investing in myself, keeping people on my platform that people want to see, uh, bringing people on my platform that people may not expect. Like fucking, I told, I said on my interview, I want to interview Jordan's son, Michael Jordan's oh, yeah. son. That'd be hard. Why the fuck you piping down, pipping? Uh, exactly. That'd be hard. Like, why, like daughter. It, yeah, like Obama's daughter. Like, is this pe staying innovative and and bringing personalities on? That's why I said I like No Jumper because. Adam 22 can make money without being there. He can have um, his- Brick Baby, uh, Wack 100, all them boys is just short up. And they just Shark talking. for sure. And they just talking and they the, the CEO's not there. No. So it's just different things that you just gotta do to keep shit going and it's just bigger than me. Like I just gotta cr keep creating new personalities and you know, the Charleston White thing's going great. Uh, the FYB J-Man shit is going great. They bring thousands of dollars to the show. That's why yeah. I paid them good. You figured out. Like you Charleston White's out. making like a good 100000 a year for me. Yeah, yeah, you figured it like, out. You know what uh, it takes. I know what it takes. And, uh, you know, he delivers. And it's just about them delivering. And that's my only advice for you. It's just like, I know, you know. I was about to ask you about Boss Talk 101. Now, yeah. we've been steadily going up, but I always ask you. But I can you go back good to too. each episode where I came and asked like, Sean Cotton High's Boss Talk 101 doing. We still, yeah. you know, we hear, mm -hmm. but what do you see when you look at the, the, I, the I brand? I see in, investing in yourself. Like, I, oh, the yeah. first thing I said when I came here was like, God damn. <laughs> but I just feel like guests. Like, you always, and you are you do a good, good job at that. Like, it was a point in time you had hella people from L.A. coming in Oh, here. yeah, they still coming, you too. You know what I'm saying? Hell, yeah. But it was just like, just, just, just being youthful. Stay youthful. Yeah. Because the kids run this shit. They run YouTube, bro. That's hard. Whatever they say is hot, is hot. 
Um, when artists come to the city, shit, have them tap in. Yeah. People come in here and do shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shit's like. We get up and move around too. We were just in Chicago. Move, so we move around. around. You move around. You don't be there. No, you don't move around. Yeah, like around the they don't be there. They yeah. just, the camera guys. Because there. And people, <laughs> and a lot of street cats kind of, they, a lot of street cats, they try to say, uh, oh, Sean's scared. He don't be outside. And But you got to understand, I can interview somebody in New York, LA, Miami in fucking two hours by doing this shit. I have a cameraman in every city, bro. Wow. Every city. Atlanta, Florida, Vegas, LA, Chicago, Philly, DC, New York. Hey, such and such is there. Hey, can we, uh, and that's how we do it. That's hard. Because now I don't have to pay to travel. That's right. That's eating up your profits now. That's right. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? It's thinking smarter, not harder. And a lot of these people are stuck in their old ways. That's why I was talking about gutter. It ain't 2005 no more. Like, and it's no hate, but you just got to change with the times. Wow, man, thank you so much for coming on the show. What else you got for my boy, That's man? It. Sean Cotton came in and did it again. Man, listen, man, thank you so Look, much. Look, win, lose, or draw, like, when I lost that fight, I just want to say this, too. I was going viral, but everybody takes L's. They just don't post them on the internet. I mm -hmm. took my, I took an L. Yeah. Everybody has L's. Um, Give me a story about Big D. Are you still going back to Big D one yeah, more time? Yeah, I, I want a story because uh, that's one thing I enjoyed at the funeral is the fact that when people were going up and telling, you know, story. memories of different situations. I love that. Uh, me and Colton, uh, which is his cousin, and yeah. I grew up with Colton. Uh, yeah, he told me that was your best friend. Colton's my best friend. Uh, been in shootouts with him. Almost died a few times with him. Colton's crazy. Shout out to Colton, too. Like, he really changed his life around. I'm talking about a guy who, man, like... Almost went down for a murder case, like from being in shootouts. Christmas Eve, I was in a crazy shootout with him. Almost wow. died, crazy, bro. Like he's the Colson is the reason why I never want to be in the streets because of the shootouts I was in that almost killed me Man. on Christmas Eve. What? Picture getting killed on Christmas Eve, bro. That crazy. So it was just like it just being in the shootout with him on Northwest Highway. Um, that that changed my life, and you know, shout out to Colton. Um, you know. Man, but Colton's his cousin. So me and Colton had a studio, and uh, we it was like four hundred dollars. That it was the the studio was like four hundred dollars a month. We couldn't meet, we couldn't meet rent. That's how I met, this how I met Big D. We couldn't meet rent, so we sitting in Colton's Camaro and we looking at each other like, bro, what the fuck we gonna do, bro? Like we don't have the money, like, and I'm tired of spending this four hundred dollars. We're never here, and that's how I met Big D. Big D came in, met. Big D came and saved the studio. Damn. Wow. And at first I was like, man, who the fuck is this big ass dude? Like, man, he in here trying to run shit with his deep ass voice talking about some what up though. <laughs> <laughs> who the fuck? <laughs> that was him, boy. What so, up though? But nah, man, Big D. And then the, I think me, I think him coming to my fight, it made a, it made a lot. Man. Because none of my day ones came. And not no, blaming really? them, I mean, not blaming them. I mean, everybody don't have I mean, people got to work, bro. People got, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I don't blame them, bro. They supported me by buying a pay-per-view. Right. Yeah. Like, everybody can't make it. Like, this is just what it is. But uh, he came out for his wife's birthday. I think it was at his birthday. I think it was his birthday. Was it? I don't know. But he came out ce celebrating his birthday, I think. And uh, when I, uh, him just support me being there, it meant a lot. Mm -hmm. it, it, it really meant a lot, man. And, um. Uh, I'll never forget Big D. Like I, like I say, his kids will never, uh, his kids will never uh, be in need. I will always look out for his family, and um, you know, because he always called me and gave me advice, and um, he always called me seeking for advice. It was never like he was too too good for advice, you know. Or um, you know, he 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 helped me, man, and um, a lot of people. He touched a lot of Helped people. A lot of people. Right. That girl, Cat. I seen her. She got on Hellcat. Well, Hellcat. Hellcat. Yeah. She got on no jumper behind. Uh, yeah. No deep. You yeah. know. Yeah. Uh huh. So she gave the props. Deep. Yeah. Now that's hard, man. Like I said, man, that's a big pill to swallow, man. But at the end of the day, we're gonna make sure to make his legacy live on. That's why these cameras gonna keep rolling. Mm -hmm. That's why you gonna keep coming to Boss yeah. Talk. This the mission we own. You know what I'm saying? Boss Talk 101. Um, like, like, man, we thank you and appreciate you, man. I appreciate y'all, man. We you, bro. Man. We'll never stop you, right. asking you to come by. Right. Trying to figure out what you're doing and yeah. saluting you. We salute you a yeah. lot on this and, channel, yeah, bro. Yeah, a and lot, you can bro. always reach out to, even if it's not about an interview or if, you, yeah. or if it's somebody that you want to get on. 
I'm not, you know, I'm I'm really like, you just gotta let me know. I just salute you a lot because I yeah. know I know it ain't easy. Bro. Yeah, it ain't easy. It's it not. Easy. Sometimes bro. I text you and say stuff, and you I like then when I, before you had changed your number, I think you changed your number. Yeah, and they was like, man, I just want to say, man, keep keep going, mm -hmm. keep going, because sometimes people don't say that. Sometimes yeah. people don't talk to people, mm -hmm. and like you told me, man, hit bun be up. And I was like, I don't know about that, but yeah. I still hit him up. Yeah, you just like, have to hit people. Just hit them up, up yeah. and just tell them they're doing about good, them. man. Right. And, because we, you, it ain't always got to be a body in them. Exactly. You know what I mean? But thank you for coming on the show. Man, appreciate it. I, I know you're coming back because we got to bless you with a special gift. And yeah, I, I told gotta, you. I got to come back. You got to come back, yeah, bro. I got to come back. Say, come see, back. every time we. So we doing that today. Let's mm -hmm. get it out the way, man. Check it, man. Hey, man. Thank you, Sean Cotton. We love you. Love you too. Keep pushing that Say Cheese, man. Say Cheese TV is hard, bro. Appreciate you know what it. I'm saying? Appreciate <laughs> it. Say, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk. And we out.